Welcome to the Teaching Tax Flow Podcast, where the goal is to empower and educate you to legally and ethically minimize taxes paid over your lifetime. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Teaching Tax Flow Podcast, episode 33 today. We're going to talk about unleashing potential. Now, what exactly does that mean? You're going to have to listen to find out a little bit more, but no better person could we think of than bringing on this gentleman who you're about to meet to talk about just that topic, unleashing potential financially and overall well-being. So before we jump into the introduction and the show, let's take a moment, thank our sponsor as always. This podcast is sponsored by The Mortgage Shop. Are you looking to qualify for an investment credit loan without jumping through hoops? That's easy. They have loans with LTV up to 89.99%. Exploring their products and discovering how they can work for you is easy. Simply visit mortgage.shop or call 865-325-2566 and tell them TTF sent you. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Teaching Tax Flow Podcast. I am John Trapolsky, the co-host here. With alongside me, I should say, Nate Hamill, our Vice President of Member Engagement at TTF. How are you, Nate? I'm great. How are you, John? Oh, I'm about to be a lot better when we introduce our guest here. So uh, the gentleman we're about to introduce you, as you can see him here on the screen, for anybody that's watching the video, if you're listening to the audio, we're going to build up the suspense. We're not going to tell you right away. Um, Just to throw a couple numbers out, a couple stats, and I say stats because that'll circle back around. You'll understand what I'm saying about this gentleman. So just think sports, think sports minded, right? So you're throwing a football, maybe into baseball. This gentleman's negotiated over 3 billion B, capital B, in contracts over his career, eight times first round draft in the NFL, and 60 times set a first round pick. Currently, and that's to date, holds the largest North American sports athlete record contract over half a billion back to that capital B. So 500 million contract value. And that's with Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs. And not to mention that, if anybody's watching this too, you see a little picture over his shoulder there. Um, There was a little movie about this guy's life back in, uh, I believe it was 96, going off memory, uh, Lee Steinberg. So hey, Lee, how you doing, my man? Nice to see you. Doing great. I really drug out that intro, and that was just a, a little chunk of your of your resume. So those those of you that don't know Lee, I'll um, go ahead and spill the beans. If not, I I'll just start yelling, "Show me the money!" For a little hint uh, from that movie, Jerry Maguire was about was about your life back in the day. So without jumping into that too much, you know, we got to keep this somewhat tax or finance related. Um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, Lee. What uh, what you got going on these days? Um, so. I'm still representing a series of football players. I'm also finishing my third book. Um, We have a new program that's uh, designed to do a couple things in sports. Number one, most of the games come down to the fourth quarter uh, or the last drive today. So is there a way to stimulate energy and productivity? And there are big breakthroughs in biomed. So I've talked to a number of teams about hyperbaric oxygen, stem cells, light stem, which is treated light, uh, NanoV, and a couple neurological uh, treatments that can really make an impact on neuroplasticity and brains and the rest of them. So I'm taking that to pro teams and then college teams to try and give them a competitive edge. The second problem is that when a player gets injured under the cap today, uh, and if that left tackle is making $20 million, then the player backing him up because of cap restrictions is probably someone who was an undrafted free agent or uh, an aging player. So therefore, it's a precipitous drop in, in talent. And is there a way to bring players back from rehab quicker? And then, of course, the concussion issue. So that's one of the projects. We uh, we have a school uh, that we're conceptualizing down in uh, Arizona in Mesa near Phoenix. And it would be for athletes that um, want to have enhanced education plus training in their sport. 
but also people that want to work for a team, a league, a conference, and sports marketing, sports media. And so we're trying to put together uh, a curricula that would be novel and innovative and uh, uh, try to train the next generation. Um, I do things called agent academies where we train young people how to negotiate, how to recruit, how to uh, uh, mentor players, how to do a charitable foundation, how to do damage control. So it's all about trying to create a new generation of skilled, ethical professionals to mm. take this field to another level. I love that. That's amazing. I love that's that. amazing. And honestly, that's one of the times or one of the reasons that that I reached out to you, Lee, as I was mentioning, you know, prior to this prior to this podcast is, you know, we sat down probably six years ago now. And I mean, I feel like I, I flew out to y'all in, in, in Newport Beach there and, you know, look at the marina and kind of sitting there chatting. And a couple things really stuck with me, right, is, you know, you're not just an agent. You just don't see a contract through and kind of sit around and, you know, wait for renewal on that. Right. It's you know, us talking and some of your experiences, you really work with these players and and help to develop them. And really put some, I wouldn't say put some sense into them, but really kind of bring bring it up to the forefront, right? Like obviously now with the, with that Mahomes deal, I mean, you're talking half a billion dollars, right? That's that's most than you know a very very tiny percentage of people will see over a lifetime. So how how do those conversations go? Maybe early on in the you know contract negotiations, and really just when you meet these players and going through the recruiting processes, you know, how do you kind of warm them up for? Hey, you may be receiving a lot of dollars. And this is how I suggest that we handle that. The first key, John, is listening skills. It's drawing out a young man, another human being, so you understand their deepest anxieties and fears and their greatest hopes and dreams. And you go through their priorities. In other words, how important is short-term financial gain or long-term economic security? or uh, geographical location or family or spiritual considerations or being a starter, being on a winning team or endorsements. You want to know how that all fits into that athlete's life. And then you want to put around that athlete a team that does financial literacy. So you're educating that player. You give them a safety net for a little while, but you're empowering them so they can take charge of their own life. So they understand what the tax code's about. They understand how to budget. They understand uh, the concept they won't make this money for the next 50 years. They may make it for eight. And, and you put a safety net underneath them. The second thing you do is teach them how to network so that we're constantly trying to stimulate second career. So I'll give you an example. If um, I talked to players we had in the 49ers, and I said, can you think of any businesses proximate to Santa Clara where you train that might have opportunities for you? And can we go out and network in venture capital? Can we go out and network uh, in high tech? Um, so it's not by chance that retired tight end Brent Jones put together a $3 billion hedge fund or that Steve Young works at. Uh, hedge funds. So we're using, we're thinking ahead, or Bruce Smith, uh, uh, a construction company. We're looking ahead, and I've even had three players who become minority owners of teams. So mm -hmm. this new generation can take equity in a deal as well as a hefty fee and see the growth and, and, and stay through for a liquidity event. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Lee, I see Nate's head shaking there like, yes, now you're talking my language yeah. being in the, in the financial planning side. So I'll let you go for it, Nate. Yeah. Lee, it sounds to me like right away, as soon as you identify a talent and somebody that has a lot of potential, you almost surround them and place like a board of directors over them. Like, hey, it's your company. It's your brand. This is who we're going to put in the seats to make sure that we make the best choices see the vision clearly or clear roadblocks that get in the way. Is that, is that pretty accurate? You almost see it as like a board of directors with the, um, uh, higher level athlete. That's true. Mm -hmm. The lower level athlete who's not making much money and doesn't have much profile. It's not quite as true, but, okay. um, 
One of the things that I uh, ask the players to do is go back to the high school community that helped shape them and put down roots. Set up a scholarship fund or boys and girls club project or a church. And then at the university level to to network with those alums that can and help you. So Earl Campbell, for example, maybe the greatest running back ever, um, got help to do a sausage company by a big alum at the University of Texas. And so it's it's all about networking. And to the pro level, we asked them to put a charitable foundation together and it has the leading business figures, leading political figures, and the uh, leading community leaders on a board. And they'll execute a charitable program. Like work done, a former running back just put the 200th single mother in her family into the first home. They'll ever own by making it out and then moving the families in. So it's athletes hit life. But while they're doing this, they're developing their non athletic skills. Right. And they're also looking at the movers and shakers. So the whole point is from the very beginning, we're focused on what's this long term plan? Drawing out that particular person, mm-hmm. you're not representing them generically, but it's that person and Mm. you've got to peel back the layers of the onion and get deeper and deeper to um uh what someone really feels because men don't share quite as easily i'm I'm sure your female view will attest to that as as women do so it's harder to get someone to tell you how they really feel and what not what the world thinks is right but what what would fulfill them Mm. And on that note, too, Lee, it's, you know, now, you know, looking at here we are at 2023, you know, it's feels like just the other day it was the whole Y2K thing. So, you know, it was 23 years ago. Um, I was chatting with with my brother-in-law, Cody, actually a little while ago on this. And I mean, he's a he's a diehard, you know, NFL guy. And I feel like he brought up a statement or a question or a comment, you know, around the table and just like how what are the challenges now? You know, is it is it more do you see more personalities and I hate to say egos, but egos kind of getting in the way of some things or how do you from an agent side really work with those players? And again, kind of comparing present day to, you know, maybe 20, 30 years ago. Well, this is a generation brought up on social media. Mm. So they're already thinking about branding themselves early. And and as opposed to 40 years ago, they don't read as much uh, in terms of the newspaper, though, and attention span is a little shorter, so you better get it out pretty quick uh, if you want to uh, re- retain uh, attention. But NIL has changed everything because name, image, likeness, marketing people who are now working with athletes, they may start with them in high school. So um, the whole concept of, uh, of uh, going to college and not really worrying about anything until if you're an athlete you get drafted not true anymore and uh, I mean there's a hospital up the street here and I'm sure that there are agents hanging out in maternity wards looking for healthy <laughs> it's like you come up be like yep that that baby's big you get look at look at look at those hands yep there yeah we're good sign them get them on get them on the docket um so so, Lee, I know we we kind of jumped into a lot of things and, you know, we don't want to, you know, consume too much of your time here. We really appreciate you hopping out with us. But I know you had mentioned that you guys had some some new projects going on here earlier, you know, on the show. Um, what's what's next? What's next for for Lee Steinberg? I know you've, you've gone kind of uh, you've done a lot. You've done a lot. I mean, looking back, you know, to, to the 90s, even with that movie, you know, people maybe now put a you know a face with a face with a face or a face with a name and hearing all the other stuff that you do and are doing, but where, where do you see the next decade or two in your life? Um, I, I see it being part of content supply, sports theme, motion pictures, television, <clears throat> video games, new apps on the uh, internet, new ways to enjoy uh, sport, um, uh, cutting edge medical treatments that revolutionize how quickly <clears throat> players can uh, recover and can simulate energy without uh, uh, drugs. Um, increasing TV contracts because um, 
if you take the NFL, 80 of the top 100 shows last year were NFL nighttime football. So mm -hmm. we're in a situation where not only is NFL football and after that college football the most popular sport, it's the most popular form of entertainment. It's what people are, are watching. So, uh, you know, I think we move further. There'll be new sports, new niches. You'll have e-sports uh, busting out. Um, and uh, that'll end up becoming a professional league. And um, they, the, I think our passion with uh, sports will just continue. And and then I believe you can use a uh, practice with players to address any societal need. So if I had Lennox Lewis, uh, who's a heavyweight champion, cut a public service announcement that says real men don't hit women, he can do more to trigger behavioral change in rebellious adolescents than a thousand authority figures ever could. So we can target Domestic violence and sex trafficking and racism and bullying and and all sorts of problems. So I see uh, uh, trying to work on programs that that deal with those societal issues. Those just a couple tasks, right? I mean, most people most people are like, oh, you know, I'm gonna go on vacation in the next two years. You're literally changing the face of of the way that we interact with sports and, and players, which is fantastic. So. Um, kind of in closing, Nate. I don't. I don't know if you had anything else to kind of put Lee on the spot for before we let him off the hook no, here. Not that we have time for, because I could spend all day with Lee. I'm sure you can. So, Lee, just in in closing, I mean, what would be if you had a had a young athlete or just a young individual coming to you? What might be some advice that you'd give them? And and really, just financial, entrepreneurial life. What what would be one little yeah. statement you might be able to give one of these these young individuals? To understand today, because of the popularity of sport, that they are a brand, and they have the ability to to be the owner. They have the ability to be the president. They have the ability, whether it's media or business, to to do all those things. And it's a fast jump. If if an athlete understands how to network and reach out beyond himself to to uh, network with business people and other people, they can have uh, an amazing uh, uh, group of activities that will be uh, uh, beyond anything that older athletes ever ever dream. Hmm. Excellent, excellent. It comes from a very wise man. So anybody who hears this, take it to heart. Uh, but thank, thank you, Lee, again for joining us. I know you got a got a very busy schedule. You yes. got a got a lot going on. Um, it's been a pleasure seeing you after a little little gap in years there that's been since we've chatted and we look forward to, to hanging okay. out with you again in the future yep it's it's that time right like we're all we're all back up we've all risen um so thank okay. you thank you so much and and we'll be definitely you know reconnecting soon here seeing what you're up to we're not going to wait a thanks, decade buddy. though to hear how this decade okay. went but we'll be okay. back so excellent thank you lee thank you nate thank you everybody for joining us back here on the teaching tax flow podcast again we have some great content coming up this show included Go back and listen to this one a couple times. I think Lee had mentioned a couple couple statements in there that you could either you know write down, you know maybe get a little tattoo on your arm of some of those, um, and definitely definitely enjoy life. I think is one thing that we're we're getting across here, and just take ownership of what you have. So thank you everybody, and we will see you next week. Hey everyone, John Trapolsky here as always from the Teaching Tax Flow team. Thank you, Lee, for joining us on this great episode. Thank you, Nate, for hopping on with us as well. Um, something we always talk about here at Teaching Tax Flow, obviously, as we always mention, um, is controlling your tax situation, but that also carries through to your personal or professional life. So not only, obviously, did we talk a little bit about finance in there and what some of these athletes may encounter um, as they jump into these careers, um, fantastic careers. Um, some of those dollar figures may be a little shocking to some, um, but think about that, right? Like with the great opportunity comes a lot of potential challenges, especially if you're not planning ahead or planning forward. So thank you, Lee, for joining us and jumping into those specific topics. Some of those examples you had mentioned and really just some of the things that you're working on are absolutely fantastic. It's great to see that somebody is really taking part 
in that personal board of directors for other individuals, case in point, as Lee does as a agent for his clients, for those athletes. He's, he really becomes a partner with them, not just a client um, relationship. So thank you everybody for joining us. As always, any questions, please send them to us. We would be happy to forward them on to Lee if you had any of those. Um, but as always, some other great topics coming up. We're really excited to bring Lee on with us here on this episode. And as we line up some other guests here in the next couple of weeks and actually jumping into a little further in the quarter, um, we look forward to everybody shooting us over more of those topic ideas or any potential guests you may have as well. So as always, see you very soon.